Hello there, my fellow Xenos Exterminators, and welcome back. Welcome to another slightly humorous approach to one of the main factions in Warhammer 40k. For today, we are gonna be covering the legendary Death Watch, alien hunters and killers working for the Ordo Xenos of the Imperial Inquisition. Goes without saying though that any and all humor from this episode, or the series in general, is a pamphlet and should not be taken seriously. I am your host, the grimdark alien hunter for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Death Watch is an independent space marine chapter composed of the most badass space marines from every chapter known to humankind, who are then deployed according to their skills and which specific Xeno they most enjoy killing. If they have a Devastator squad composed of 10 heavy bolter equipped space marines, who are then sent to fight the Tyranids, you can bet that those heavy bolter equipped marines will be the best shots with a heavy bolter in the galaxy. And they will also know everything there is to know about fighting the space bugs. And also also, they will be loaded with the best toys for killing the Tyranid. Except that the Death Watch does not have Devastator squads. Or do they? As well as anti-Xenos tactics, Death Watch Marines are also instructed in unorthodox and covert warfare techniques, as well as a lot of training for missions that the regular Space Marines either balk or scoff at. Stuff like hostage rescue, kidnapping, and false flag operations. A large part of their induction is actually spent getting Marines to unlearn everything they know from their previous chapter and learning how to adapt to new tactics from other sources. Their armor is also painted black, save for one pauldron that does remain in the chapter colors to avoid pissing off the machine spirit. The other pauldron gets replaced entirely with a super fancy and blingy silver one, bearing the inquisitorial seal, despite the Death Watch not having much to do with the Inquisition itself and being self-governed. Surprisingly, this paint job actually manages to look badass, even if it does end up being quite pointless. With the likes of the Black Consoles, the Black Templars, or the Raven Guard having fully black armor anyway. In a nutshell, the Death Watch are the SEAL team of the Space Marine chapters. They get the job done, and usually they get it done quickly. Calling on ancient oaths and debts of honor from hundreds of Space Marine chapters, the Death Watch forces, I mean, kindly requests that each chapter volunteers a handful of their best warriors to be conscripted into the Death Watch. This usually occurs when some older Death Watch Marines die in battle or return home after fulfilling the terms of his service. Some chapters view recruitment into the Death Watch as a grand honor, with the chosen warrior being both envied and revered by his other brothers for being chosen. Others, on the opposite side, either view the conscription as little more than an inconvenience, as it robs them of their best warriors, or as a chance to get rid of marines too insubordinate to mix with the battle companies, but too well liked and celebrated to be demoted. All Defarge recruits are full-fledged space marines, no neophytes here, and they usually believe that they have some idea of what to expect too. Most assume that they will be brought to a heavily fortified space station or planet where they will be trained in much the same way as they are already trained, but with more specialized weapons. After all, space marine training is already ridiculously comprehensive and intense, with a survival rate of less than 10%. This notion of theirs is immediately proven wrong, as the inductees gaze first upon a watch fortress. What greets them here is a systemless planet floating in the middle of nowhere, encircled by a colossal artificial ring supposedly built millions of years ago by ancient alien civilizations. Kinda ironic that they are based on an alien structure when they are dedicated to exterminating aliens. And on this ring, bristling with Imperial gun batteries and missile defenses, the Death Watch and their private fleet of warships make their home. In fact, this ring station is so big that the Imperium has built an entire city into the ancient superstructure, including individual quarters for thousands of space marines and servants, customizable training fields, 
including artificially recreated planetary environments of a dozen different types. And of course, a cinema, where the Death Watch brothers can watch their own units wipe out thousands of Xenos over the sound of heavily salted popped corn. The recruits are then sworn into the Death Watch, and they are forced to undergo more hypno-indoctrination to put the Watch above all their old loyalties. And after that is done, they undergo months and months of intensive retraining in very unconventional tactics. They are divided then into six-man squads, or kill teams, with no two members being from the same chapter. They are also introduced to their brand new arsenal. Each of them is given a combi weapon, built to accept a wide range of attachments and modifications and ammunition. Much to the horror of any old-school tech priest. And because guns are good, every Death Watch Space Marine must have a secondary and a tertiary weapon just in case. As part of their training, each Space Marine is forced to watch My Little Pony, I mean endless hours of vid recordings of other Space Marines losing against the Xeno. The lesson here is twofold. One is to understand the Xeno's strategy, tactics and weapons, including all their strengths and weaknesses. The other is that although the Death Watch Space Marines come from very diverse backgrounds, nothing creates better unit cohesion and hatred against the Xeno then for a space marine to watch helplessly as another space marine dies over and over across a thousand different battles. After all of that, the point is pressed home. It doesn't matter what chapter you are from. The space marines in the recordings were mercilessly slaughtered, and now you must avenge them with extreme prejudice. The experience is said to be so realistic that all the inductees must be physically restrained in their seats prior to donning the vid gear which in all likelihood contains a pain glove nicked from the Imperial Fists, courtesy of the Blood Ravens. At the end of their training, every Death Art Space Marine has been remade into an unparalleled Xeno's killing machine. Although very rare, as the Death Watch is more of a small unit spec ops force, meant to infiltrate and eliminate specific objectives or targets, the arrival of additional Death Watch kill teams typically spells doom for whatever unlucky Xeno SOB is at the receiving end. The daily rituals of a Death Watch Battle Brother include 3 a.m. Morning Prayer The Death Watch is roused from their chambers to pray. The prayer lasts two hours, one for the Emperor and the other for brand new ways of killing the Xeno. 5 a.m. Morning Firing Rites the Death Watch begin owning their shooting skills upon captured alien civilians. Bonus points if they're Tau or Eldar. 7 a.m. Battle Practice The Death Watch descends upon their prisons holding captured Xenos, and proceed to find the best way to maximize pain and suffering upon them before granting them the Emperor's peace. 10 a.m. Morning Meal This is a light meal prepared by the serfs of the Death Watch. Permission to eat Xenos they've killed denied. 10.15 a.m. Movie time. The new initiates of the Death Watch are forced to watch videos on fellow Battle Brothers getting humiliated by the filthy alien. Each Death Watch member is strapped and bounded by ceramite braces to contain their mighty rage. The ancient films Alien and Predator are highly popular among veteran kill team members. 11.15 a.m. Tactical Indoctrination The Death Watch plans the next campaign to wipe out the filthy Xeno and study the weaknesses and the best possible way to enact as much pain on the alien as possible. 1 p.m. Midday Meal Another meal is prepared by the Death Watch serfs. Permission to eat the alien still denied. 2 p.m. Evening Firing Rites The Death Watch practice fighting the Xenos in the dark. Tau and Eldar snipers are given weapons and promise freedom if they survive. The odd few that ever do are then given freedom via a bomb attached to their previously mentioned weapons. 4 p.m. Battle Practice The Death Watch fight Tyranid Organisms. Due to the raw amount of rage that the Death Watch possess during the battle, some wonder why they are not angry marines. 7 p.m. Evening Meal a feast is now prepared by the Death Watch serfs. 
Eating the alien is allowed if the watch commander deems them safe to eat. 8 p.m. Evening prayer. The chaplain gives a stirring sermon. He also warns about ancient heretical pro Xenos propaganda. For example, E.T., Star Wars, and especially Star Trek. 10 p.m. Interrogation time. The Death Watch interrogates and tortures captured Xenos for information and intelligence. Any Xenos that successfully resist are designated as tomorrow's meal, if they are safe to eat. If not, then they are thrown in with some starving crude. Midnight. The Death Watch ends their interrogation. They punch their small posters of hated Xenos and proceed to go back to rest in their quarters. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about a few Death Watch aspects for today. With this being predominantly a humorous video, I obviously didn't get into more detail than this. Alas, if you want to watch some proper Death Watch videos, you can watch the other episodes in this same playlist. There's already a lot of stuff I covered on their specialists, their watch stations, their weapons, and more. If you found this video at least marginally entertaining or informative, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. If you want to support the channel more directly, you can also check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great healthy day. The Emperor Protects.